If you want to wallow with gutter, you go to the gutter, but you don't come back to the gold. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I was telling you ladies out there to be careful because Satan can take a piece of junk, dress it up, stand it up in your face to ask you out on a date. And next thing you know, you're involved with somebody that is beneath you. You're involved with somebody that is not your quality, not in your social class, not your standard in any way, shape, or form. So you have to be careful. And I, I won't go any further into the, into the story other than that, you know, because I don't want to seem like, as a believer, I don't want to seem like I'm insensitive to people, but I'm not going to be fake either, you know, because, I mean, as far as any of my enemies getting taken down, I don't care. I honestly do not care. I don't rejoice when my enemy falls, but I just don't care nothing about it. I'm thankful to Father for having my back, and I'm going to leave it at that. Because that didn't have nothing to do with me at all. So anyway, I, I just said that because that's not the only enemy that I had that Father struck down. That's not the only enemy I had that Father struck down like that. Because see, um, a few days before that, I had gone into a gas station that was located, that is located in the town that I came up in. And I got in line. And the individual was in front of me. And, of course, you know, the, the, the busted whores in the area that I came up in, they could never take their eyes off of me. It was like I was some type of excitement for them or some type of superstar or whatever. So wherever I went, oh, that's, that goes such and You know, that, it was that type of deal. And I was standing behind her. You know, I don't pay people no mind. People don't bother me. I don't bother them. But she was uncomfortable. And she, start, she was getting shifty. And she started pulling her pocketbook up on, up on her shoulders. So I knew I was making her uncomfortable. So she went on and did what she had to do. I didn't pay her no mind. And I paid for what I had to pay for. But as she was exiting the door, she slowed down. She slowed down going through the door because I don't know if she wanted me to catch up to her walking out the door. I don't know. The, 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 she just always wanted some type of um, acknowledgement from me. And I never gave it to her. Why would I acknowledge that? And, um, she was going to try to slide her body out of the door so that she wouldn't have to hold the door for me. I don't need, you know, listen, my sisters and brothers, I don't need nobody to hold no door for me, okay? I know how to open and close a door. But that was her way of just trying to show me, well, I don't like you. I think, well, I don't like you either. I didn't say it. Nothing was said. But that's the way she tried to squeeze out the door, almost close herself up in the door, as if to say, I'm going to squeeze out the door so I don't have to hold it open for you. Well, days later, she was dead. It might not have even been days later. It could have been one or two days later. She was dead. And when I got off of work that night, I drove up right after the crime happened. I'm not going to say exactly right after, but the yellow tape was still up. You see how God works? You see how God works? Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Because... Her ugly boyfriend, who I attended school with, he caught himself trying to uh, bully me, meaning I was driving down the road, and the female that had, uh, was, is now deceased and her friend, who used to follow me all over town, they had tried to start some type of confrontation with me one day. And, of course, I ended up putting both of them in their place. I'm not going to tell y'all what I said. <laughs> and um, the next thing I know, her boyfriend was heading down a road, that would have ran into my street. I'm thinking, what, is, what are you doing on my end of town? You're a low life. And he was staring at me like he had a problem with me. And I was staring at him back like I got a problem with you too. If you think I'm scared of you, you can think again. Because see, he just did that because the dude that I was dating was not in the area. Because when the dude that I was dating was in the area, I didn't really have too much trouble with anybody because he had a bad reputation. But it just so happened he was not in the area during that time. So whenever he was not in the area, the other dudes from the area that I came up in that didn't like me would try to go for bad. So like I said, I've had dudes to try to come after me. So that's the reason why I don't have no problem taking no dudes down because like I said, I ain't scared of nobody. I'm not scared of nobody. I don't care if you male, female, whatever. If you bring it, I already brought it. And then as it turns out, this dude ended up uh, being the one that took the life of the girl that used to harass me over some dude I used to date. And he ended up getting life in prison behind that. 
Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And I've learned years later after that that there have been other folks that have been dropped like flies that used to harass me and disrespect me and thought I was afraid of them. When in fact, who they should have been afraid of was God Almighty. Can I talk about it? Because I ain't never been afraid of no enemies. I'm just the type of person I don't like trouble because, well, I wasn't raised like that. I was not raised like that. And um, that's just not how I was brought up. That's just not what I'm about. I'm the type of chick, you know, I just like peace and quiet. I like to shop. I like to go on trips. I like to do things like that. I've been that way all my life. Even ever since I was a teenager, I was always, you know, going out of town with my family or going to amusement parks. That's, that's the type of life that I had as a teenager. I don't know about nobody else's life, but I will speak for my own life. Ain't nobody else going to speak for me. Ain't nobody else going to speak for this here unless it's God Almighty. I know what my life has been like. And I feel like it doesn't mean that life doesn't come with challenges. We all go through drought seasons where we have to um, conquer Goliath. But I just knew that my enemies were not going to put their tongue on me and don't none of that trash out there know me. They don't know me. They were standing on the outside and they were projecting because I was not who they wanted me to be. And my life wasn't what they wanted it to be. You understand what I'm saying? Because I think that they were getting a kick out of the fact that the dude that I was dating was still affiliated with them. And see, they knew that the dude that I was dating had something going on with that chick that got killed. And so I think they were getting a kick out of that because they felt like that things were being done in the dark behind my back. But hey, boom, boom. Because I'm not hiding nothing for the devil. And I am in no way going to fret. And that's what the message I'm trying to send out there to you all today. Fret not thyself. Because of evildoing. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Because that crowd, that was a bad crowd. That was a bad crowd. I mean just, and it was a lot of those um, out of shape, nasty looking slips that attended Franklinton High School when I was going to school. See, those were the ones that were, had befriended a dude that I used to date. And I feel like he knew that they didn't like me, but he was the type of person like to play both, si play both sides of the fence because maybe perhaps he knew them before he knew me. But see, my sisters and my brothers out there, this is what I'm talking about. You don't involve yourself with nobody that is friends with your enemy because if they're cool with your enemy, enemy, they're cool with your enemies for a reason. But, you know, of course, a lot of times um, I think that for most of us, we don't know at the time that we meet people that they know people and they know people. You don't know who knows who until you sit down and talk to them. And I never talked about my enemies to this person. That's one thing I've never done. I don't sit around and talk about my enemies. Because let me tell you something about talking about people. And then I'm going to conclude this, um, close this conference out. When you talk about people, you make them a reality in your life, although they may not be a presence in your life. You make them a presence in your life. When you don't talk about them, they don't exist. In your domain. They do exist, but, but are you following me with this? You can talk people up in your life. You can bring their energy into your perfect peace just by speaking their name or speaking something about them. I don't talk about my enemies because they don't interest me. Now, if I'm in the midst of spiritual warfare with the enemy, I still don't even mention their name. I just grab my weapons and get down in the spirit realm. I don't have, I'm not going to talk about an enemy because I've never had an enemy that I felt was important enough for their name to roll off of my tongue. I'm not going to fret about an enemy. I've seen Father cast down too many of them. For me to worry myself about somebody coming up against me. But the same can apply for you all out there. Father will fight your battles as well. You don't have to worry about an enemy. Ever. Now, I'm only putting out in this conference what I felt was necessary. I could have just 